start with you. Just say who you are. I don't know if. Uh... <laughs> Scott Gallagher. Mallory Corny. Bill Short. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to the policy committee meeting for April 28th, 2021, uh, 6 p.m. in the boardroom uh, in person and Zoom. We'll call the meeting to order. Could everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance United States of America, the Republic, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, we have a number of policies that um, are either recommended for updating from PSBA or uh, the recommendation for new policies be placed within our uh, gateway school district policy and on display. Uh, we have listed those. Uh, we're just gonna go between myself, Dr. Rossi and Dr. Chakey, uh, basically describing these. And if there are any questions, uh, of course we would uh, spend some time answering the questions. Uh, uh, Policies for discussion policy 111 is a lesson plan uh, policy from PSBA. Uh, in the packet that you have in front of you, we do have our current Gateway School District policy and the recommendations uh, on the subsequent pages are listed. Uh, Dr. Chafee or Dr. Rossi, could you just provide our viewing audience uh, school board right now, just a real quick overview of the lesson plans and how we operate currently within the district. Excuse me, Dr. Short, is anybody Susan, right now? Excuse me, Susan, I think your mic's on. So essentially it's moving from uh, the option for a lot of districts that do submit their lesson plans electronically, uh, weekly, they're presented. Uh, we have both options available and uh, this policy would basically reflect that. B, policy 150, Title I. Uh, Dr. Rossi, you want to provide an overview? Uh, policy 150, Title I is a comparability uh, of services. That will be a new policy. Each year we're required to fill out this, this form, and it determines and compares staff at each of our elementary schools. And that's a standard policy. Uh, policy number 203, immunizations and communicable diseases. Uh, this would be an update. And this is just simply reflecting changes uh, to the health and safety plan that was adopted recently due to COVID. Um, anything else, Dr. Chafee, from there that uh, would be different? Okay. 
Yeah, if you go to the back pages, you'll see in bold what they're recommending will be updated. And then anytime there's a bracket of time, we have to check. Mm -hmm. Health screenings, uh, examinations, uh, Dr. Chakey, policy 209. This policy incorporates some language regarding monitoring student health for specific requirements under the school code, state regulations. New section on health monitoring was added to the language addressing requests for alternative methods of monitoring based on religious accommodations. Um, as well as addressing student health conditions such as autoimmune disorder that may render some types of health monitoring such as temperature screening a little bit uh, less effective. And again, that was an update. Uh, also, I wanted uh, uh, we had had discussions, in fact, last night about hazing of uh, the policy 247. Uh, that is an update, and that does include the Title IX coordinator, uh, who happens to be Dr. Shakey. Uh, Dr. Shakey, anything else uh, with this that uh, requires uh, an update? We recently adjusted some of the Title IX policies in changing some of the terminology, and uh, this just aligns right with some of those changes that we made to the Title IX policies. And, and one note um, from this policy, it does uh, designate within that the uh, principal uh, is responsible for providing our students with information about uh, definitions of hazing and uh, proper protocols to ensure that um, they are in, in fact reporting anything. So uh, uh, this is included within that language. Following up on that one, um, 249 bullying and cyberbullying. Again, just aligned like the uh, like policy 247 hazing. It contains a section addressing the joint investigative requirements, which has been updated to reflect consistent terminology for Title IX sexual harassment title and uh, the Title IX policies that were revised. And, and it's important for our viewing audience and our board to understand that. Uh, uh, we need to continue to update these uh, whenever a, a PSBA recommendation comes down or uh, for that matter, any type of court ruling is handed down. There have been some districts in the past who uh, uh, unfortunately have not updated their policies and uh, it, it can be reflected in some punitive damages, uh, not only from maybe a, a plaintiff, but uh, also from PDE. So uh, we are doing what the, is appropriate at this time uh, for updating these. Uh, a new one, uh, Dr. Chakey, 250, or I'm sorry, is that 252? Yeah, 252. Dating and violence. New policy dealing with dating violence. Uh, again, somewhat aligned to the Title IX responsibilities. But this specifically uh, adds a section related to the investigative requirements for reports that can be Interpreted, interpreted at the outset or during the course of an investigation falls within the provisions of Title IX sexual harassment. I can speak firsthand uh, about the creation of this policy uh, that is relatively new. Uh, uh, I, I can't exactly think of the year, uh, 12, maybe longer, 2008, 13 years ago. Uh, we had one of uh, our unfortunate incidents here uh, in the history of Gateway with one of our uh, cheerleaders and dating violence and uh, a student was involved in a very, very sad, horrific situation and uh, uh, one that I know has uh, stayed with me a long time. So this policy uh, does reflect uh, changes and uh, information that our students uh, need to know of with dating violence and it will be a new policy uh, upon 30-day review.
we, we, we have had Mr. and Mrs. Kusha in uh, almost every year to provide a speech to our students uh, about dating violence and more specifically the events here that happened in our community um, and our high school. Uh, the last couple of years due to COVID, it hasn't happened. Um, Mr. Kusha has been in touch with Mrs. Riccardi who sets that up. Uh, but I, I do the opening. Uh, so it's a very emotional piece that I inform our students about in, in the auditorium. And uh, I'm sure Mr. Kusha and Mrs. Kusha would uh, be willing to come back seeing that it's policy. Policy 309.1 telework. Um, Dr. Rossi, do you want to speak on basically sure. this policy and how it reflects to what has happened with the pandemic? And I believe this one will be an optional and um, further review will have to come from our solicitor and human resources because if there's agreements or contracts that could could uh, already exist, we'd have to work that out. But it's based on requests from a lot of schools throughout the state uh, and the need to pivot to working from home during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it also provides several options that should be reviewed and discussed, like I said, with our human resource department and solicitor. That would be a new one. Policy 314, physical examinations. This policy uh, references, makes a lot of references to the board approved health and safety plan, um, as well as definition and language regarding health monitoring for staff. Uh, when, it, when it's a specific language on municipal disease and uh, when it's appropriate to have exclusion from school due to um, municipal disease. 317.1, one that we uh, often refer to and have uh, professional development and speak of routinely at our opening day. Uh, welcome back with uh, teachers, educator misconduct, uh, Dr. Rossi. And this is uh, an update. Uh, there's a section uh, added to address circumstances when allegations underlying report of educator misconduct include conduct that appears to con uh, constitute Title IX uh, sexual harassment and other discrimination. So just as Dr. Chakey said in the, the other two policies, a lot of this uh, are references to Title IX. Uh, policy 318, attendance and tardiness, Dr. Chakey. This is another policy where we'll have to uh, review and take a look at the collective bargaining agreement. Um, but this policy updates uh, how, how to address both attendance and tardiness for school employees. Um, reports of unexpected absences addressed with, with uh, an applicable leave policy. In addition, uh, responsibility of student welfare 340. Dr. Chakey. This was revised to remove the brackets indicating that certain language is optional for specific provisions that PSBA recommends. Um, specific direction to staff regarding responsibility for student welfare. Some of the minor revisions were made to broadly address staff responsibilities and actions in order to account for both virtual and in-person learning environments. Uh, moving along, policy 718 is uh, service animals. So uh, we, we have not had uh, this situation. However, we are constantly monitoring and wanting to update this to reflect uh, the professional opinions of individuals out there. Uh, I'm sure, I'm positive at some point, we will be faced with uh, a situation that will involve a student requesting a service animal within our schools. Uh, so again, we are seeking legal advice on this to see how and what we would be able to include within this language. So we, we will be providing the board with more information on this moving forward. Uh, policy 803 school calendar. Uh, Dr. Rossi, you wanna 
this is a, an update, but there's a lot to this one. It's been updated. You'll notice uh, all the bold that, that's there and um, mostly is coming from the pandemic and the emergency, the, the closures. And so it kind of addresses that um, and discusses the types of activities that may be counted as instructional time when under the direction of certified school employees. It does reference prior a lot of these um, recommendations for policy updates have been driven by COVID and, and the outcome of that and seeing that it could be with us substantially longer uh, moving into the next couple of school years. Um, the policy 824 uh, does in fact align with the educator misconduct, uh, but Dr. Shaky, you wanna touch briefly on that? Yeah, policy 824 aligns to um, some of the Title IX responsibilities that we've been talking about briefly. Uh, it, it also updates to include the reporting method of use and discrimination, sexual harassment, bullying, hazing, dating, violence, retaliation report forms, and the process for that in the different levels of accountability as we walk, walk through that process. Policy 829 video um, recording photography operations. Uh, if you notice, this was adopted back in 2012, and I think we can all agree that uh, uh, there's been a lot of change uh, with social media, filming. Students have at their disposal a camera that's uh, such a high powered recording device that uh, uh, wasn't available several years ago. So we are taking the approach to put in the policy, uh, again, looking for some recommendations from our solicitor and other districts as to how we can tighten this policy up. Uh, I, I have noticed uh, an increase in the amount of uh, recording of incidents if something happens within a building. Uh, probably the first thing that happens is a, a phone is pulled out and, and the incident is recorded. Instead of seeking help or trying to um, uh, move, move a situation or de-escalate a situation. So we are looking at ways to ensure that our message is getting across uh, also, in the past, we've had individuals go onto our property and, and film uh, little commercials or videos and uh, post those on YouTube without anyone's consent or knowledge. So all of that will be looked at and, and altered within this policy. Uh, last item, uh, there, there is no existing policy uh, on uh, the use of medical marijuana in schools, uh, uh, there is some guidance. Um, uh, Dr. Gallagher has uh, provided me and, and sent me some information and uh, we were able to retrieve some of this. Uh, we are currently looking at policies that re will reflect if an adult, 18 years old, however, could be a student, uh, has a medical marijuana card uh, that is legal, has been referred to by their physician. Uh, we will put into effect guidelines that will allow for our staff, medical, administrative, to receive that information and put in place uh, procedures where if the child slash adult would need to utilize uh, the medical marijuana or alternative that they would have to of course leave the school premise in order to do so because it's technically illegal in the commonwealth of pennsylvania to have and to use on school property uh, th th this is one that's becoming important for us to look at um, and i am sure that it's coming down the road not only for our children slash adults uh, but also for our professional staff in case they may have an opportunity uh, where they have uh, the need for a card or use of medical marijuana.
Dr. Short, this is John. Can you hear me all right? Mr. Ritter, can you let me? Uh... So this is John. I'm talking. Uh, are you able to hear me? Okay. You're bumping up a little bit. So let me know when you've got a good volume level for me. Yes. Okay, so um, that was this was the subject of one of the uh, spring legal roundup uh, topics for the PSBA today, and they they tossed out five or six panels that I can just uh, in, uh, introduce into the the thought process of the administration and the school board right now. So, as you said, Dr. Short, they say that marijuana is still illegal under the federal law, and you're not allowed to possess it, sell it, or manufacture it. It's a federal crime. Uh, public schools and state agencies must provide assurances that we do comply with federal law. However, if we do comply with federal law, then we get we violate the Pennsylvania law, which um, you know opens the door for students to you know people to be able to have and use what's called medical marijuana. So then the question gets tossed to us: Can schools knowingly allow medical marijuana to be possessed or administered on school property? Doing so could put us in jeopardy. So this is a um, PSBA knows that this is a long overdue set of regulations that need to be thought through by the Pennsylvania Department of Education and you know offer guidance to school districts. So their current rec informal guidance from the Pennsylvania Department of Education and Health is recommendation that uh, if uh, medical marijuana needs to be administered, the parent should come to the campus take the child you know on campus you know but outside the schoolroom and administer it that's just you know pretty unworkable so they've got to come up with something a little better for us there so um uh the next piece is that there are let's see uh, uh employer drug policies that need to be examined unemployment compensation has a wrinkle here and the other uh, interesting thing is it used to be uh, if you smelled marijuana, that was a, a legal basis for a, a school administrator or someone to perform a search. Well, now if it's true that you're allowed to have medical marijuana and there's some sort of odor there, it's no longer just a basis for the allowability of a search if someone smells marijuana. So it becomes even touchier to think this thing through. So that was the uh, the lift from PSBA today. So I, more, more to come from them. And I hope it comes soon to help us out on this policy that we're attempting to create or update. Thank you. Thank you for that input, Mr. Ritter. As you can tell, this is a uh, policy, or I should say guidelines that have a lot of moving pieces within them. And unfortunately, not a lot of answers. Uh, so we, we will be monitoring that. Um, gentlemen, do you have any information you want to share on that issue or? No. I got a question. Yes. Um, I mean, one of the things that's kind of weird that, you know, the nurse can't administer it in a nurse's station. I mean, you have a medical professional being able to do it. So hopefully the state will at least allow that. But um, with a teacher who may be using it, um, in the unfortunate event something should happen in the, in the classroom where a student gets hurt or whatever, and word gets out that this teacher was utilizing the medicinal marijuana, how would that play out if, if someone's saying that this teacher was under the influence while their child was, was injured or something happened? You should be a lawyer, Brian. This is one of the great questions that's being thought through right now. There's, there's no straight answer to that, but it, you know, it also ties into unemployment compensation, you know, somehow. So I, I don't know. I mean, they, they didn't offer much guidance from PSBA on this today. Uh, any of the colleagues uh, around the state offer any input, Mr. Ritter? Others? No. This was simply a brain dump from the latest and greatest. Um, legal evaluations of all of the um, situations and uh, across about 15 topic areas. Medical marijuana was one of the topic areas that they touched on. And, you know, they just scratched the surface of it and said, uh, stay tuned for more information on it. No guidance yet. Doctor, per se. It's 
not like it. And we are seeing more dispensaries pop up uh, almost in every township community, it seems like. Uh, so uh, th there's no doubt that we will be facing this, not just Gateway, but other school districts throughout the Commonwealth. So uh, uh, that, that's why I'm, I'm sure that PSBA uh, had that on their radar, John. Thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Uh, you see the number of policies that we have presented tonight. Uh, we will be tidying up some language that we will then be having on the study session uh, to approve for display. Uh, again, uh, we will continue to update all of the policies that uh, reflect the necessary changes coming down based whether or not on COVID uh, and or other situations uh, from uh, the education world in Pennsylvania. So. What's the best way for folks in the audience to offer feedback over the next couple of days and weeks? Uh, we, we will post these um, online. If there is um, a question regarding any one of these policies, uh, they can simply email uh, the administration, myself, Dr. Chakey, Dr. Rossi, with questions. But since there is no policy, existing policy on medical marijuana, oops. There, I lost you. Are you there? Yeah, you're good. Oh, okay. Since there's no existing policy on the medical marijuana, are we, do you then name or make a number for a policy? How does that work? Uh, we would wait until PSBA uh, officially adopts something. However, that doesn't prevent us uh, from having guidelines that we would publish, whether or not that's in the student handbook or um, with, with our professional staff, uh, whether or not that's custodial maintenance uh, cafeteria, teachers, paras, uh, that these would be the procedures in place if you do have a card or are in the process of receiving one uh, just for information purposes so we can avoid any situation uh, that Mr. Gottman uh, referenced. Okay. Excellent question. Anyone else? Yes. The 
person, you can't live with that person. You can't have anybody go to a, a game or a concert, record this, put this little clip on their Facebook. Yeah. Is that banned under this policy? Uh, d depending upon which event, because I do know that there are certain musical, musical where they have the right. Could you repeat the question? Uh, the question uh, from uh, Dr. Gallagher was in reference to a parent, guardian, student going into a musical, uh, any other event, and then just simply recording and posting on Facebook or other social media. We, we do have certain features such as the, the musical that we can uh, ask our parents, and we I, I believe it's posted, that you're not allowed to video record uh, and post for certain events. So we do monitor that. Uh, we hope that they would refrain from doing so. Yeah, Dr. Short, there are two reasons for that. One, the musical production is copyrighted and you're not allowed to like, you know, it's the same with football. This is the, the exclusive copyright of the uh, national broadcast that you, you can't you can't rebroadcast it. Number two, there are kids there and it's just not really right to without somebody's permission to put, you know, somebody else's a, a child's performance out there uh, on the, the, you know, the social media. Yes, it, it, and, and I think um, in response to all that, we need to allow or um, place postings, signage to reflect in certain areas that videotaping, recording is not permissible and then list the reason why based on the policy. which I do believe we have at the stadium, but I don't know if we have it at the um, Robert Reed, is it? Yeah, I, I'd have to look. But uh, uh, it's important that we do have that signage because anyone can say, well, how, how would I not know? Any other questions? Okay, thank you everyone. We're gonna move for adjournment at this time. So moved. Second. Motion for Mr. Ritter, second for Mr. Gottman. Thank you everyone, meeting adjourned. Very good, thanks guys, bye-bye. Thank